Good afternoon, my name is Pop. I'm making a YouTube video in Ubuntu Basics showing a little bit about how to use Microsoft Flight Simulator 4.0 for DOS from about 1990 in DOSBox. I've got my 1304 Unity screen up here and I'm going to open up DOSBox Emulator. I've got a prior video that shows how you can put a menu system up in DOSBox. Let me zoom in on this so you can see it better and I've got 1 through 9 and I'm going to select 5 which is Flight Simulator 4.0. Uh, selection number 4 is Flight Simulator where you can change the parameters of it. I'm just going to hit 5 right now and it says do you want to calibrate your joystick? I've got a Sublogic very very fancy joystick. It looks like it's got about 20 buttons on it or something. I'm going to hit enter and now you see a monochrome rendition when I hit 11, the 11, uh, F11 key, it changes to an amber monitor, which is what I was used to. This is how I first learned how to use Flight Simulator on an amber Hercules monitor. Hit F11, F11 again and goes to the green screen. That was the other one. Uh, you might notice that uh, this uh, has a nostalgic feel to it. I'm going to go through and show you how all of this works. I've got other versions of Flight Simulator and I'm going to go over that and then I'm going to show you the same screen in color. Let me show you how an airplane works a little bit. Up here you see this arrow and then down here there's a, another thing and then here and then over here the throttle. Most people think that when you give gas to the airplane that makes it fly faster and that's not the case. Now it's certainly true on the ground. If you give more gas the engine speeds up, the propeller speeds up and the airplane which is now stationary begins to go forward but on an airplane that is not how you make the airplane fly faster. In fact the throttle when you give uh, an airplane gas makes the plane fly higher and when you give less gas the plane flies lower. The controls over here do the speed. Now that's kind of counterintuitive. I'll explain it a little bit more. Uh, pretend you've got a glass sitting on your desk and if you hold it in your right hand and rock the glass forward so that all the whole entire bottom edge is not on the ground and only the edge away from you is on the ground, that pitches the nose down. Oh, a plane's flying through me there. I'm transparent. And you can see this thing go down and then when you pull back on the glass, the edge nearest you is making contact with the tabletop and that makes the nose go up and that's the elevator on the back. If you just twist the glass so that the whole thing is still flat on the surface of your table, that's your rudder. Twist it the other way, it's still flat, right? Now up on top, up here. This is your ailerons on the wings and you change that by rocking the glass to the left and rocking the glass to the right. If you want an airplane to fly faster, you leave the throttle alone and you just push down so that the nose is down. If you want to fly slower you can pull back and then you can give less gas too and you save fuel. You'll go slower. Let me now change the view and I'm going to show you what this looks like from the outside. This is kind of grainy but that's the best they had when you had an amber monitor when Bill Gates at Microsoft got his foot in the door with planet Earth he was very wise in that he began selling to the business community and the business community was rather stodgy in those days they said such things as well we don't we don't really want to see stuff like pictures we just want numbers and we want letters of the alphabet the educational community saw that there was great advantage in having uh, pictures and of course so did the entertainment community and the military they saw the advantage of having flight simulation and when Bill Gates bought flight simulator from Sublogic this was one of the biggest money makers of all time for uh, his company.
Let me just zoom a little bit over here and I'm going to get to the back of the plane and let me see if I can uh, get this thing zoomed. There we go. And I am going to change these settings with the joystick and you can see what's going on when I change them. I'm going to push down and you can see in the back the uh, elevator is going down and when I pull up the elevator goes up. It's rather grainy. It's hard to it's hard to see. Over here if you'll notice I got a zoom factor and if I get in closer I'm zoomed to 2.0. Now you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to now do the ailerons. I'm transparent again. The plane's flying through me. And the ailerons. The funny thing about an airplane is that when you tilt the plane like that, the plane has a tendency for the left wing to go up and the right wing to go down. And you say, well, I recognize that. That makes the plane turn right. No, actually, it makes the plane turn left. That's because the one on the left has got more drag, more air resistance. And because it's got more air resistance, even though it goes higher up in the air, the plane's going to turn left. So what you do is you compensate for it with this afterthought device called a rudder. And you turn the rudder such that the plane is going to go in the direction you want it to. That's kind of counterintuitive. Let me uh, turn off this simulation and I'm going to show you how and where this all resides in Ubuntu. I can get out of it nicely but I'll just turn it off like this. Okay, it's off. Now I'm going to open up files and home Control H allows you to see the normally hidden files and they all begin with a dot. You see that there? And I'm going to go and look for DOS box and here it is. And when you open up DOS box there's a configuration file and the configuration file, that's where I have my menu, it's on the end and the, uh, uh, there's another video that I've made that shows how to add that menu, but I'm going to do something now where I'm going to go down here where I have got rimmed out where it says machine VGA and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to rim out Hercules and then I'm going to save the file and then I'm going to open up DOSBox again and I'll close all this and this time, when I open up DOSBox, the menu system will ask me again which one I want. I am not going to just run it for, I can't, it'll goof up, the screen will look pixelated. I have to hit the one where I need to configure it. So I will hit 4, go through the startup menus, uh, see. Now on this case I'm going to hit M, not Hercules, that's VGA. And I'm going to do normal flight, dynamic scenery, function keys on top. Do I want to log flight time? No. Mouse? Yes. Joystick? Yes. And C. And then when I hit enter, now it's in color. And it's very pretty. It's VGA. And there is something interesting though. I have noticed that the Hercules screen uh, actually had better resolution uh, when I went in down here to the text portion of it. The Hercules screen was actually clearer than this, albeit it was in amber color. Now, Hercules was in the process of competing with the VGA people and although VGA got selected as the standard, Hercules was about to leapfrog them. And in those days there were many, many standards. The prior one was EGA, the one before that was CGA. 
And I've got CGA also, and I have a prior video that shows how this exact same program, Flight Simulator, ran on a Hewlett Packard 200 LX. This is a very fun program. It teaches you, no kidding, how to fly to a greater extent than some of the newer programs. The newer programs are all gee whiz and fun and games. However, this one will teach you radio navigation like crazy. And that's always something to fall back on, even in this day of GPS. The FAA was, for the longest time, uh, not cognizant of the GPS encroaching upon uh, regular navigation skills. Well, I'm going to close this here and let me show you something on the internet. Uh, on the internet there is a very very good website and this website is a Czechoslovakian guy's website. He was so interested in flight simulator that he made a 30 minute YouTube movie, movie of all of the different flight simulators that were ever made and it's just fascinating. It starts off uh, very grainy looking from the earliest days up until the reality of today which is uh, hardly distinguishable from reality. Uh, on this website you can also download various things including uh, DOSBox configurations. He has not gotten into Android yet so it's very difficult to use DOSBox on your telephone or tablet. I am running Linux Ubuntu and of course to the greatest extent uh, this is uh, being run on Windows machines. Now I find it very ironic that Microsoft uh, has gone over to Windows but has abandoned their DOS capabilities so you've actually got to get DOSBox to run a Microsoft DOS product inside of Microsoft Windows. But that's nothing new because, you know, they had uh, Windows CE out and that was kind of, I don't know if you call it a flop on the marketplace, but it really didn't go very well. Let me open it up one more time and I want to show you one more thing. And this is just uh, something that is rather different. Uh, on this occasion, I can just hit 5 to just run it and I think it'll come out. Yes. Now, on this machine, let me... Uh, zoom in on it again. Uh, I'm looking out the front window and I have got a laptop and there is a method whereby you can look sideways and backwards and so forth. Although my joystick from Logitech uh, has a button on the top that has a multi-controller on it, it does not work with this and I have not yet goofed with it enough to to enable this. But the way you do it now is to hold down the laptop function key, the one on the bottom left next to the Windows key, and then you hit scroll lock, and then you hit some 10 key. Now here I'm looking out 9, which is the to the right. Uh, function key scroll lock 2. Well, I'm looking straight backwards, right? And now I find it inconvenient to use function key scroll lock and then one of those 10 keys. So there is a way and I'm going to show you how to do that and I've showed this in another video. I'm going to just diminish this. Uh, the way you do it is to open up a terminal control alt T and here's my terminal and you're going to type in XEV and XEV is an event tester and you can see the little white screen right there and when I hit the function key scroll lock that is key code 78 and although the text overlaps you can see towards the right there third line down kind of SCRO and then to the next line LL underline lock okay remember that 78 Okay, now I'm going to hit on the 10 key, there is a slash key right up above the 8. And that's a 106. Okay, well, I'm uh, going to turn off this uh, event tester now. And you got to remember those numbers. Now that was XEV. And let me go backwards here. Type in this 
x mod map space dash e space and then inside of parentheses key code space 106 equals 78 and that is saying take whenever you see uh, the slash key treat it as the scroll so when I hit enter I have now told Ubuntu that I have got uh, something cooking here let me open this up zoom in oops zoom in and now I'm hitting on my 10 key the slash above the 8 and I'm hitting 9 I'm hitting 6 I'm hitting 3 I'm just going around the plane and this this is more convenient to me now I did not make it permanent when I turn off the computer it'll be back to normal and if I want to reverse it and not turn off the computer I'll just reverse the uh, code I'll say uh, 78 is 78 and 106 is 106 but oops I got some there a plane just flew right through me well that's all I got pretty much my name is pop and uh, I have a whole bunch of videos on YouTube called Ubuntu basics this is a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I hope it was entertaining for you thank you very much for watching